Hello, one of the things you read today was about Washington uh, crossing the Delaware River. Um, after Washington lost New York, he had to flee and run away, and he did that. He, re he escaped to Pennsylvania. And Washington's army was facing a lot of problems. Many of his soldiers had left, and one of the words you read was desert. And when you desert, it means you're running away from the army without permission, which led to problems. They were just getting upset. They were tired of what was going on. And so they just had enough and they decided we're done. And so they left. And Washington knew he needed to come up with a plan to try to inspire his men to keep giving them something to fight for. So Washington came up with as a plan to cross the Delaware River. Um, the Delaware River forms the border between Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And he knew that in Trenton, New Jersey, there was a group of Hessian soldiers there. And we talked about Hessians being these paid soldiers that were from Germany that came over to fight. So Washington really needed a plan to do that. And so he said, okay, what he was going to do on Christmas Day was he was going to cross the Delaware River. So it was actually Christmas Eve, the night before Christmas. He'd cross the Delaware River, which was really a, a dangerous thing to try to do, but he needed to do it. So in the middle of the night, they snuck across the river using uh, different boats or ferries. So they would have to move some soldiers at a time on these flat ferries. I'll show you some pictures in a second. And then they, those ferries or boats would go back and get more soldiers and, and cannons and things like that and bring them over. The picture in your book on 179 that shows Washington standing up on these ferries, that would never have happened. It's a very famous painting of him doing that, but he wouldn't have been standing up. It would have been very dangerous for him to do that. So after Washington crossed the Delaware and they were able to surprise the Hessian soldiers at Trenton, they really didn't get to put up much of a fight. And that was a great victory for when the Patriot or the Continental soldiers defeated the Hessian soldiers in Trenton. And about a week later, they were able to go on and defeat the British at Princeton and get some badly needed supplies and things that they needed for his, for his army. So Washington crossing the Delaware was very famous because it really inspired the men. It was a daring victory that he really needed. So this spot right here is where Washington kind of crossed the river and hid some of his ferries. So after they crossed the Delaware River, so Washington, as I was saying, decided he's going to cross the river and attack the Hessians. On this map, you can see where he's going to do it. He's going to do a little bit farther up river, and he's going to cross at what we call a ferry, and he's going to cross his soldiers over. Then they're going to march down here, and then they're going to split into two parts to attack the Hessians and Trenton that way. So it was a very bold plan, but one he knew he had to take a risk at doing. So you're going to see it just a little bit more close up of what they were going to do, cross the river, come down here, and then split up to attack the Hessians. And over here are just some things that I've shown you before. This would have been something that the Hessian helmet would have looked like. Here is a Hessian musket. This is a powder horn. Again, where we talked about they would have stored their powder and just some other various things that would have been used by soldiers during this, this battle. So this Jefferson Ferry House, this farmhouse, is the only existing structure within the park that witnessed the crossing of the river. It was built in 1740. So this is on the Pennsylvania side of the river. And this building would have been there at the time Washington was crossing the Delaware River with his men. And at this site before 1748, a ferry was first owned and operated by Garrett Johnson. It was used to transport the artillery, which is cannons and things like that, from Pennsylvania to New Jersey the night Washington crossed the Delaware River. Um, this ferry is a full-scale, authentic reproduction of the type seen on the river during this time. So this is an example of what that ferry would have looked like. And as you can see, it said here, it is a re uh, re reproduction. So meaning it was not one that was used, but it, they made it to be about the same size as what they would have looked like. So they were just very easy, flat bottom boat. You just stand on it. And here's another picture of it. So this is what you could use to load your men horses, cannons, anything like that on there that you would need. And this is what it would look like. You just had a pulley system. You had a rope going across the river, and then they would just pull themselves along that rope like you are seeing there. Then eventually a
bridge would have been built. But this is how Washington got all his men and equipment across the river. And then here is just another way they did it. If they didn't have ropes, they used long sticks to push their way across. Here's another example of a boat that would have been used. So this is a Dunham boat where the other thing, the flat thing, was a ferry. So this is just another way that Washington got his men across. And every year they will have a reenactment where people pretend to be crossing the river. And so these are what those boats are from. Giant paddles to operate the boats. And here is a picture from the Pennsylvania side looking across the river to the New Jersey side. So the, the soldiers would cross from we are, they'd go across the river to the other side. And now there's the bridge that they have going across. Very narrow bridge, only very scary when you're crossing another car at that time. And here it says George, General George Washington and 2,400 Continental soldiers crossed the icy Delaware River from Pennsylvania and landed at this spot on Christmas night, 1776, on their way to attack the British mercenary force of Hessian soldiers at Trenton. The last of the rebel soldiers, horses, and 18 cannon landed from the Durham and ferry boats in the pre-dawn hours of December 26 and assembled in a snow-covered field next to the nearby ferry house. They made a surprise attack on Trenton at dawn, killing or wounding over 100 Hessian soldiers and capturing 900 along with their arms, which means muskets, ammunition, and artillery. So... It was a big, big thing for Washington to do, and this is where they crossed. And you can see some ducks there visiting. So some more pictures of the Delaware River. And at the, this is a, basically saying this is probably close to the spot where Washington would have stood watching his soldiers cross the, Rev, the Delaware River. And this is one of the houses that Washington used as his headquarters, so a place where he would make plans and stuff. So this building was there at the time Washington was uh, at his headquarters, and it, uh, at the time Washington was crossing the Delaware. This was a, a hotel, a little place that had a restaurant where the people staying at the inn could stay and have food and things like that. This is in the dining area. They're playing a game of checkers. They had a little place where people that were coming in to stay at the inn could have a, a beverage or two. And those just uh, go down to close up the little tavern thing they have there. Babies would often stay here, so that's an old-fashioned cradle. Just a bed. Nothing really exciting, just a bed that they would have had. Another bed in one of the rooms in the top part is where the people would stay if they're staying at this inn. And that's just stairs that go up to another attic type part. It's hard to see, not the best picture. And just some old fashioned locks that they would have used when they put those uh, doors down on the bar so nobody could get into it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the Continental Lane. This is the road over which Washington's army began its march to Trenton on December 26, 1776. And this is the route they would have followed to. So when they eventually get to Trenton and supply and surprise the Hessian soldiers there. And here is just a little monument uh, in honor of the people that the soldiers that made that march on to uh, on to Trenton. So the next thing I want to show you is a video that talks about Washington crossing the Delaware River. Desperate for money, food, clothing, and ammunition. In early December 1776, Washington's army is falling apart. The British smell victory. The fact is their army is broken all to pieces, and the spirit of their leaders is all broken. I think one may venture to pronounce it is well nigh over with them. Lord Rawdon. From a 20,000 strong army in August, only 3,500 troops are left. And with those enlistments expiring in January, Washington takes a bold gamble. If this fails, I think the game is pretty well up. General George Washington. He sets his sights on a daring attack at Trenton. But how to move his army across the Delaware without being detected? A crossing near McConkie's Ferry is the answer. 
far enough from Trenton to escape notice, but close enough to reach the Hessians in a few hours' march. On Christmas night, 2,400 men, 18 cannon, and over 50 horses cross a treacherous, rain-swollen, ice-choked river. It rained, hailed, snowed, and froze, and at the same time blew a perfect hurricane. John Greenwood. Despite conditions, not one man, horse, or cannon is lost, but the operation falls hours behind schedule, and the cover of darkness is gone. But Washington and his tenacious troops have made their own luck. The Hessians, thinking no one would attack in such weather, cut short their normal scouting party. The Americans gain the advantage of surprise and drive the Hessians from Trenton. Fend off 8,000 British troops and go on to win a decisive battle at Princeton. In just 10 crucial days, from crossing the Delaware to victory at Princeton, the tide of the war has turned. The rebel soldiers begin to have more confidence. An unnamed British colonel. They are now become a formidable enemy. Colonel William Harcourt. Today, at Washington Crossing State Park, you can stand where the Americans landed, track the route to Trenton and on to Princeton. Here and throughout New Jersey lie the crossroads of the American Revolution. That was a quick little video about uh, Washington crossing the Delaware and how important it was. That would inspire a lot of troops to say, hey, maybe we want to continue in this battle and continue what we're uh, fighting for. If you have any questions, please either call me, email me, or any way you want to get a hold of me. Thank you. Take care. Bye.